World AIDS Day continues with an exploration of British attitudes towards gay men and AIDS. The End of Innocence explicitly discusses sex and contains strong language. Now, what are you going to be getting up to this weekend, especially if you're young, free and single? Charles this is the week when we talk about sex, when young men and women are put through their paces. Now, it says here that most of us do it at least twice a week. Would you, on the first night, do it? Yes, I would. Are you feeling horny tonight? Always. This is a continuous horny. Continuous horny, yeah, that's right. It's the week when victims are paraded for their sound bites. A condom is a lot more comfortable than a body bag. This is the week when presenters grit their teeth as they go through the obligatory condom rituals. And let's dim the lights for that bedtime feel. So, condoms at the ready. One, two, three, go! Oh, come on, let's get on there. Oh, the thing is here. Not very good. There is now a danger that has become a threat to us all. It is a deadly disease and there is no known cure. This is the week when we remember that real sense of panic almost a decade ago. Anyone can get it, man or woman. That time when the virus seemed like a terrorist, creeping up on the unsuspecting. But it's spreading. You couldn't be too careful. So protect yourself. AIDS affected everyone. In union today, the vicar was careful to wipe the chalice after each sip had been taken and turn the vessel before offering it to the next communicant. The FA has tried unsuccessfully in the past to stop kissing and cuddling on the pitch. Now they've flown the whistle on celebration drinks, after-match frolics in the communal bath. The Sports Council for Wales decided to bar the AIDS carriers from this pool and the National Sports Centre pool too are worried about the dangers. They fear they could contract AIDS at accidents from infected blood or from saliva when giving the kiss of life. 4,000 doomed to die from AIDS over the next three years. And along with the fear of infection came the statistics and the predictions. I feel that by the end of the century, there won't be one family in the United Kingdom that isn't touched in some way by this disease. Up to 17,000 people in England and Wales will die of AIDS in the next four years. Laboratory tests show an estimated 20 to 50,000 people in England and Wales have been infected with the HIV virus. The health minister warns heterosexuals and appeals to everyone to avoid casual sex. Who are you sleeping with tonight? I don't know. Who did you sleep with last night? I don't know. Who slept with her last night? I don't know. How do you get AIDS? It was this association between sex and death that was to be the most potent tool in the hands of the advertisers. Sleep around and you're at risk. If you must sleep with more than one partner, you must wear a condom. But even the best efforts of the makeup department were overwhelmed by the documentary evidence. Here was a disease that seemed literally to suck the life out of its victims. And it was against this background of the fate awaiting those with the virus that stories of their victimization carried a particular horror. This woman has AIDS. She's a former drug addict. She's just 25 and doesn't know how long she's got to live. What's left of her life will be spent in fear, fear of being identified. This woman was beaten senseless when other people in the squat heard her talking about having AIDS. She ended up sleeping in this car park. Young women, beaten senseless, ostracized and dying. It's like getting a death sentence, that's what it's like. And your life just in a nightmare. You don't want to make living, you don't want to make And it was this nightmare, medieval aspect of the suffering of AIDS patients that briefly attracted the media to the leperization of AIDS. 
Carposi's sarcoma, the outward and visible sign of an imagined depravity. And it took a medieval figure to express the thoughts of the silent majority. Mr. Anderton told a conference that people at risk were swirling around in a human cesspit of their own making. In a newspaper poll, 55% agreed with the views of the Chief Constable of Manchester. And this retributive theme was further developed by one member of the royal family. It could be said that the AIDS pandemic is a classic own goal scored by the human race on itself. A self-inflicted wound that only serves to remind Homo sapiens of his fallibility. The Princess of Wales... However, it was another member of that same family who spelt out the real problem we had with the subject. It is doubly difficult to deal with AIDS in a country like Britain, where there is still an understandable reluctance to have frank and open discussions on emotional issues. We need to learn how to break through this barrier of inhibition before we are ready to face fully the challenges of AIDS. But this was not a country, or indeed a government, that would find such advice at all easy to follow. As one civil servant remembered after a particularly important government briefing session, you've no idea what a problem it is to talk to people who don't believe in sex anyway. Above all, AIDS has been the hostage of our private fantasies. The three surviving victims in this case have been counselled by Birmingham's AIDS lifeline, which has also fielded calls from others worried that they too may have been infected by one man. And there has been no more potent fantasy than that of the AIDS carrier out for revenge. The man is believed to be a haemophiliac in his early 20s who contracted the HIV virus from infected blood products as a teenager. You can't take him off the streets, you can't stop him. Our belief at the moment, whilst we're looking into the legal position with our colleagues from the local authority, is that the legislation that's available would not be usable. The fact that the accused man issued a solicitor's letter stating that all his partners were aware of his HIV status instantly muddied the waters. In fact, this was to be the last AIDS scare story. And two years later, when it became clear that the predicted explosion in the heterosexual population was not going to take place, AIDS disappeared from the news. Mark. Fitzgerald. Alva. Robert. In these intervening two years, over 80% of those who've contracted the virus or who have died of AIDS have been gay men. Ricardo. Raymond. Tommy. Ian. Fernando. These are the names of gay men. Danny Hare. They're becoming infected and dying in greater numbers than at any time since the epidemic started. Georgie Long, sadly missed by Frankie. David Hamilton. Martin Christopher Finn, true love always. Philip Rose. It is not true that AIDS affects everyone. It overwhelmingly affects gay men. Baby, you're a star. Gay identity has been bound up with the AIDS epidemic. Alan Ashby. How could it be otherwise? Mark Cooper. With the death of friends and Tony loved ones. Allen. When multiple bereavement Rudy. has become a fact of life. Raymond. Yet they're gay men. They are different. Mark. Alan. As one journalist remarked during the height of the AIDS scare, it was like dealing with a foreign story. They happened to other people in other countries. Yet it was happening here in this country, but to very foreign people. For many politicians, the AIDS crisis was an introduction to a world that for most was completely unknown or barely acknowledged. I can remember sitting around the table in the uh, Department of Health and Social Security as we had a look at some of the material being developed. There were drawings and descriptions.